organically become friends. You don't want to push that on anyone as a talk show host. You don't want to the first time, sure. hey, let's exchange numbers. No, but at, over time, it just happens. So that that's a, a wonderful thing. And so some of them are celebrities and, and some of them are not. I mean, but they would all get along because they all think I'm great. Bill Maher has a habit of bringing guests onto his show, Real Time with Bill Maher, or his podcast, Club Random, and then getting into some pretty intense back and forths. This time, Maher took a jab at Joe Rogan for his involvement with Donald Trump, whether it's voting for him or featuring him on his podcast. What unfolds is a surprising moment as Maher tries to go after both Trump and Rogan. So, you know, they have that in common, and so they must have good taste. Who's the coolest off air? Like, out of all the people that you know, who's that's, the absolute coolest? That's such a great question that I'm not going to answer, because whoever I didn't say would be so pissed. I think you would say Rogan. If you're into this type of content, be sure to hit that like button and subscribe. It helps the channel a ton. Now let's dive back into the video. He's one of them. would not. Oh. First of all, I don't know him off air. Oh, you guys only know such good But you guys have a good rapport. I can't believe that. It seems like there's a hint of frustration here. Maybe it's just my take. But let me know what you think in the comments. When Joe Rogan's name comes up, you can sense Bill Maher's reaction change. He starts off reluctant to answer, saying it would upset people no matter who he picked, but then quickly dismisses Rogan as an option. This feels like irritation more than anything else as Rogan doesn't follow the typical talking points that dominate Mars' circle. Instead, Rogan's independence from woke expectations seems to rankle Maher, and that irritation shows even more as the conversation continues. Everybody I talk to, okay, I fair. really do. Fair. I mean, I, 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 <clears throat> I like Joe a lot. Do we agree on everything? No, he's gonna vote for Trump, which I think is insane, but you know, that's him. Um, maybe it's you, and it doesn't, doesn't make me like you one bit less. I... And I was having this argument with a very famous close friend of mine last night who believes you cannot, he would not be friends with someone who votes for Trump, and I am, like, not on that page. We had Whoa. somebody on the show the other day, and one of the things they said to me is, well, think about how many miserable liberal people, you know, and I, my response was, think about how many miserable conservative people. I, I just think this whole idea of, like, you, ha you have to base your friendship and, and your ideas on a side is so I foreign it. to it. I hate it, too. And, and we get so much shit on our show for having everybody from every different thought process on the show. And, like, for Lauren and I, I can't imagine being put in a position where I have to decide who I'm going to be friends with based on their political ideology. I just think it's insane. Yeah. Some, people, I, some people will say, well, these people are actually harming people's lives and whatever issue that is, and they'll take it that far, but I just don't see it that way. I mean, it's not untrue. I mean, this person was saying, you know, Trump, you see, you know, he's racist and this thing with the Haitian disorder. It's like, yeah, it is. That's not untrue, but it's also way more complicated than that. I mean, the Muslim mayor of that town, Hamtrak in Michigan, the, I think, only Muslim-majority town in America, endorsed Trump, the guy who asked for a Muslim ban. So there's nuance. Yeah, there's nuance. It's just, it's so much more complicated. And also, like, I know some of the people that this friend of mine that I was talking to know that we have in common who are Trumpers. And I was like, really? You mean you don't want to be friends with that guy anymore? And the answer is usually, oh, well, you know, yeah, it just really gives you pause. Like, I see where Bill Maher is coming from here. It's the sensible view to keep friendships with people who hold different political beliefs. However, there's also a sense of irritation when Joe Rogan's name comes up. Almost like Maher has this underlying tension with anyone who veers from the usual talking points in his sphere. Honestly, it's hard to imagine Maher truly practices what he's saying. The way he speaks about Trump supporters doesn't suggest he's got many in his circle. At the same time, it can be challenging to be friends with people who are super vocal about their candidate, whether they're backing Trump or Harris. Sometimes it feels like supporting Harris has become an entire personality trait, and that intensity can be a bit much. I agree with Maher in theory, we should be able to be friends with people who think differently. But let's be real, it's not always easy in practice.
you're going to have to talk to these people anyway. It's half the country, and they're not going away. They're not self-deporting. They're probably not going to change their views on a lot of stuff unless you talk to them. They're certainly not going to change at all if you don't talk to them. That much I can guarantee. We talked about this on our show a little bit. I said, you know, how we're basically 9-11 happened our freshman year of high school. We were young. And I think our generation has watched a lot of, in, honest in my opinion, a lot of warmongering for the last 20 years. And I said, like, it's hard to even distinguish which side is which anymore. Like, I, I, there's people on the left now that are fans of Dick Cheney. Like, if you would have told me people on the left would be... And his daughter. Yeah. yeah and like that, to me, like, it, it's so... The, the line, like, I, the extremes it's have this, gone so far, you don't even... I can't recognize which is which we anymore. we were talking about on that other show, that yours that we were doing, you know, as soon as Bobby Kennedy said processed foods were bad, suddenly we all switched teams on that one. It's just amazing the way they will switch teams on a dime. It's kind of ironic hearing this from Bill Maher, who's seen as a liberal Democrat. Traditionally, Democrats were the ones more skeptical about things like vaccines. But as soon as Trump rolled out the COVID vaccine, we saw figures like Kamala Harris, Joe Biden, and Gavin Newsom saying they'd never take a Trump vaccine. It was this strong stance, almost classic left-wing skepticism. Then, when Biden took office, that narrative flipped, and suddenly, it was all about getting vaccinated, even to the point where some places required it for entry. So it's interesting to see Maher point out how people flip on things when he himself has done a fair share of it since 2020. Kind of childish. I know you think you're the, you're the, you're the sophisticated ones, it's not really sophisticated to only see, you know, your team, who's on your team. What can what can I what can I learn that supports my team or what I already know already? That's not, it's just not interesting to me. First of all, you're boring me. Boring. Don't bore me. Drop your thoughts in the comments. What did you think about Bill Maher's take on Joe Rogan? He seemed pretty uncomfortable and maybe even a bit envious when Rogan was mentioned as one of the most likable figures out there. Personally, I find Maher's statement a bit hypocritical. It's hard to believe he's practicing what he preaches. But what do you think?